Um, my name is Devin. I'm the kind of workflow guy with Max Digital. But I'll start off, uh, we have like kind of biggest, you know, big, bigger, biggest type setup here. And this is our DIT station. Uh, one of the biggest markets we're targeting this uh, right now is the merger of production and post-production and having um, aids to help the workflow go from acquisition to uh, your post facility. And that's basically what this was designed for. Having raised storage in the field so they could back it up and then they needed something a little bit more customizable. There is multiple different versions of this box. This guy right here is set up with just a Mac Pro tower, a simple you know, battery backup, and then some RAID storage. Um, what it is designed to right here is um, basically just as you dump your CF cards from the RED camera, you can have them instantly go to a uh, RAID storage protected in the field. A couple nice features of this is it is a basically like an edit base shrunken down. You can connect uh, color tablets to this, Wacom tablets. You can have a full Final Cut Pro editing system. You can do a DaVinci Resolve. You know, anything you can think of, it's basically like an edit base shrunken down. Um, the Mac Pro tower in this shelf, it's on a single one U shelf with three locks on it. Um, right now, I unfortunately can't pull it out because the cables are shortened in back so that it's less cable cutter in back. We can have an extended cable set so you can pull it all the way out. What's nice is it does clear all the way in front so you're able to get the um, cover off and able to get access to all the PCI slots. So if you do end up you know, burning a card in the field or something like that, you can swap it out without having to dismantle the entire rig. It's all meant to be very user friendly. Um, the Evo 4K, which is our 16 terabyte, 16 bay right here, it does do 32 terabytes as well with two terabyte drives. Um, this is kind of a demo, so obviously uh, it helps us to go with one terabyte drive instead of two. But uh, it's all enterprise level Hitachi drives. We're a strategic, strategic partner with Hitachi, so we utilize that partnership to basically go and get good pricing so we're able to do full integrated systems with enterprise level drives. Um, you get about 650, 700 megabytes per second. It's direct attached SAS. And um, in a nutshell, um, that's pretty much what this cart system is all about. Another nice added feature is the uh, kind of gull wing doors. They do come up. They have two, um, you know, uh, locking mechanisms, so you can do, you know, quite a bit, about, you know, 50, 60 pounds on that. You can go a lot higher, but we always like to, to keep it low and, and minimal because you never want to put, you know, you never want it to break, but it can handle quite a bit. Now, moving on from this guy for more, you know, this is definitely more the production level. It was worked on, um, you know, with a, uh, a Walt Disney shoot. Uh, Electronic Arts has also been using one, uh, and a couple other companies. So definitely more for the movie level, the, the very high end of the high end to help your DIT um, acquisition and, and control to go with post. For like kind of the mid level, I'm standing in front of it, I apologize, but we do have our um, Mobile Rocket Raid. This is basically was developed with uh, the help from Red. Um, we basically, they asked us to do something and we jumped on it, which is to build the original um, mobile rocket, which I will show you right here, which um, in a nutshell is the little brother to this guy. It is a single U, um, single express expansion utility or, um, box. What it does is we optimize the cooling because as I'm sure all you guys know, the Red Rocket does run pretty hot. So um, other expansion chassis were burning out the card. So we made it so that that wouldn't happen anymore. It also has four uh, clips, so it locks the MacBook Pro 17 inch to it. It's the same form factor, so it's real sleek and clean. And then um, it basically connects with the Express 34 and an external power supply and you're able to do 2K, 4K real-time playback in the field with a laptop. That's being done by, similar to the way this box is doing it, is you connect to the laptop via the Firewire uh, with your Red Drive. The Red Drive then transfers the R3D file and that can go to the Red Rocket. The Red Rocket does, does the D-Bear and rather than having to go back to a drive or through PCI Express slot again, it just spits it out over the quad uh, DVI or the HDSDI, and you hook that up to 2K or 4K projectors, and you can do real time instant playback of all those files. So you no longer have to wait till you get to your post facility. Uh, this is $1,099, and you're able to do uh, picture check or check your images in the field in real time very quickly, very efficiently. This has no capacity, it's just the laptop, and it's strictly meant for playback. 
we were getting a lot of questions like that, and that's why we developed this guy right here, which is the Mobile Rocket Raid, and I apologize, it's completely obscured for you. But uh, let me pull it up. It's basically what we did is we added RAID storage to the uh, Mobile Rocket. I love that air. And in a nutshell, it's uh, the same expansion technology. We same optimized cooling. We always have to pay attention to cooling when the Red Rocket's involved. And what it does is we added a uh, two and a half inch eight bay and a RAID controller internal on it. Now with that going, yeah. Um, well, yeah, it's sort of on this. I don't want to interrupt. No. By the way, interrupt all you want. It's okay. more of a dialogue for us to communicate rather than okay. we just. So the difference between basically the mini one and that one is basically the storage capabilities, right? Exactly. So is it possible to have the regular one and then eSATA in an entire drive enclosure, which you might already have, and then use that as kind of like your own mini rocket, uh, mini RAID system? Unfortunately, uh, we would love to do that, but unfortunately we're using the Express 34 slot to get connectivity to the red rocket so you no longer have that to be used for an eSATA card. Then why not put a secondary PCI Express card multiplier inside the red so that you can then go back out to eSATA? I got you. And this box has that in its future layout but in, it's in its roadmap, in. but it's not currently in there. Right now, just because it would it, optimizing speed and connectivity and having that red rocket there, it was um, a lot faster for us to connect an internal RAID controller with the RAID attached to eight drives than doing extra boxes outside okay. and it's also we wanted to keep it clean neat and compact small, yeah. basically mobile. yeah mobile and also secure when you have multiple you know um, you're carrying multiple boxes and it you know cables get kind of gets a little bit more of a bird's nest than an actual like clean nice deployable solution yeah. but that being said like I said on our roadmap is adding eSATA so that we can have multiple dump two drives as well as the internal RAID uh, if you shoot 120 frames a second with the red, um, and you bring it to Red Rocket, does it take, uh, how much time does it take to play it, the process or whatever it has to be, to play it back? Is it the time of the final shot or the time to, to shoot it? It plays back, but you can tell that it's overclocked because it will play back slower, but it's still playing back 20, what is it, 24 or 23.99 eight frames per second. So it plays it back in the way that it would play back a regular clip. Um, it just plays it back <coughs> and a, a little bit so slower as you can tell it. Unfortunately, I'm not a red flow workflow yeah. expert and I apologize for that. For yeah, that's a question for Michael and I know he will be able to answer that right away. Um, but uh, no, and I will, I'm interested in that answer as well. Uh, because you're right, there are times where you want to play back that 120, like in real time is what you're asking, correct? Yeah. Um, well, actually, maybe after this we can walk over and, and put oh, a microphone. Go awesome. I want to go there, but I think I have to stay here. And <laughs> I'll come back to you. Uh, awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, and speaking of the live play that Michael's demoing over there, well, obviously this is Michael's yeah. part. It has live play in it, which is the iPad daily, yeah. up to five devices. As soon as you hit stop, on the red one, it's about eight, uh, a couple of seconds, and you're able to access that. Yeah, it's it's very cool. Yeah, cool. it's really cool. Like, it's it's really cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, and the way that you know the software database, the way it updates all the iPads at once. I'll let I'll, I'll let him talk to it, but it's it's well thought out and well deployed. But getting back to the mobile rocket, yeah. In a nutshell, it's basically we got better uh, speeds with it being internal and just it's a little bit safer for both your drives and the red rocket.